Let's talk about After Earth, shall we? The film that apparently Jaden Smith sued his father for, for the uh, performance at the box office of, or just for its failure in general. Uh, directed by M. Night Shyamalan, of course, I'm continuing with uh, some Shyamalan reviews. Uh, for anybody who, don't know, who doesn't know, I've had this film for a while, and it's always been a film that I watch as a comedy, mostly. Although it's not horrible. Um, I mostly watch it for a comedy, and I recently bought The Happening uh, to double feature with this one because I figured that The Happening and this one would pretty much make an amazing double feature. And I already reviewed The Happening uh, on the channel a couple of weeks ago, so if you want to go check that review out, it's up by M. Night Shyamalan. And uh, this is the second one that I'm going to be reviewing by M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, maybe my third time watching it, I'm not sure, but... Um... <laughs> It's always been something that I've just watched uh, for laughs more than for uh, thrills kind of thing. But uh, you don't get M. Night Shyamalan doing too many like sci-fi action movies. He did The Last Airbender or whatever. I think that's the only sci-fi-ish film that he's made other than this one. But um, yeah, this is uh, Will Smith's baby, however. He made the story, he came up with the whole plot. Uh, screenplay and direction is by M. Night, but uh, he definitely worked with Will Smith to put this project together. And, uh, you know, he wanted to bring his son Jaden into it, obviously. And, um, yeah, it's it's got its, uh, it's got its moments for sure. <laughs> um, the intro starts off hella fast. Um, I'm watching it and I'm expecting much more of a build-up, but no, the ship's already crashing, and there's like quick credits rolling, and then it, uh, Will Smith blows away, and then there's a little bit more credits, and then they're already on the planet, and it's like after Earth. I'm like, what the fuck? Not wasting any time on this one, are you? Jesus Christ. Um, so yeah, that's uh, it starts that way, and then you have Jaden on the planet already, and then you get your, like, flashbacks, and they start talking about how Earth uh, got invaded by these monsters called Ursa. And the Ursa is basically able to smell fear, quite literally, and that's how they track humans, because they're essentially blind, other than their senses of fear. And that's how they uh, track humans. Then we learn that Will Smith, named Cypher Rage is um, a master at ghosting, which is basically eliminating all fear in the body, so therefore these monsters cannot uh, track them down, cannot track you down, because you're completely empty of fear. They're unable to sense you, essentially. So he's like the huge captain of the whatever planet they're on. I don't even know if they mentioned it. Nova Prime, that's right. Um, <laughs> Nova Prime is where they live, and the New Earth, you could say. And, uh, he's Will Smith, I mean, or Cypher Rage is super well respected. And, uh, his son, you know, aims to be like him, but Nova, or Cypher Rage is always, like, busy on missions and on ex explorations of other things and, uh, uh, just do, you know, not there for his son, and his son is having, like, emotional daddy issues, as usual. Um, one, I'm going to mention, first of all, um, the biggest thing about this film is the choice of dialect that they, they decided to go with. Whoever, uh, I guess, M. Night Shyamalan writing this, um, deciding on... I, I, don't, I don't know what, it was, what his criteria was on dialect. It's like mixing um, uh, British and Irish and American... Uh, together like it's super super weird um, with a little bit of a southern accent in there too it's 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 just comical it's not re like it's not realistic I, I I know that the aim for Shyamalan was to go for a little bit of um I don't know <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to get into M. Night Shyamalan's mind here just like I was in uh, the happening review um, like, he wanted, like, this is a thousand years, well, more than a thousand years into the future. This is a thousand years after the Earth collapsed. Um, so, yeah, dialect would be different, but it, I don't think it would sound as ridiculous as it does. Anyway, um, he had a sister named uh, Senshi, and Senshi is mentioned. Senshi has since uh, passed, and 
the son, whose name is uh, Kitai, or Kit for short. Uh, Kitai blames himself for the death, death of his sister because um, his sister basically was protecting him and telling him to take shelter in this bubble thing that, uh, that the monsters can't smell you in. And then she went and fought and uh, uh, ended up perishing in the process. And um, her and her father, uh, uh, Cypher Rage, Will Smith's character, and the, the mother, whose name is Faya, is having this conversation. They're talking about this book that uh, Cypher Rage used to read with Senshi, his daughter, all the time. And the mother's like, I remember you reading that book with her every single day. Every single day. And she appreciated it so much. And then like five to ten minutes later, you figure out what the, what the book was, and it's Moby Dick. It's like, wow, you really built that to be like something really epic, like this guide to the universe book or something like that, or this book that's like super like intellectual to like the universe, and then you choose Moby Dick. <laughs> it's like, there's other books, man. Like I would have gone with like Lord of the Flies or uh, I don't know, something more philosophical and more like, if you're going to go for like a book that has to do with like humanism mm, there's better than moby dick i guess hey no i've had not read uh, moby dick i don't really have interest in reading moby dick maybe it's a it is a proven classic but maybe it's uh way better than i'm giving it credit for so i don't know <laughs> don't shoot me if moby dick is a masterpiece i don't know but um yeah i'm just thinking like they built this book up to be something super epic and then <laughs> when they reveal it as moby dick i'm like that's it that's how i uh that's how I went to it anyway. But um, yeah, they, the mother and Cypher Rage, Faya and Cypher Rage, have a conversation and she basically tells him that he's neglecting his son like crazy and his son is like really missing him, like really wants a father. He's missing a father in his life and he wants to be him, but he's also never around to train Kit, Kitai, like his son. He's never around to, to be a father, to train his son, to have his son grow into the man that son wants to be and um so he decides to invite kit uh along on a mission because they're they're heading to a mission on another planet and katai joins and they're heading to this mission along the way they get into this asteroid belt and um they loophole to another area of the universe because they need to get away from this uh this uh, asteroid belt or asteroid storm and uh, for anybody who has seen the film Interstellar and seen how they treat the wormhole um, scenario with the visual effects and then you come watch this um, it's just spoiled <laughs> there's, there's no comparison it's like it's like it's like Picasso versus like a stick figure drawing um, it's, it's, if you haven't seen Interstellar, I guess you can be like, yeah, that was all right. But if you've seen Interstellar and how they treat that, <laughs> this, this doesn't even uh, hold a match, let alone a candle. Um, so yeah, they, they go to the other part of the universe. They see this planet that's now in quarantine one, um, like it's considered class one quarantine. So it's like the most dangerous planets of planets. So they classify planets in their danger level. This is class one, so the most dangerous. But they have nowhere else to land, so they have no other choice but to land there. Crash land there. And then the ship is uh, basically destroyed. Part of the tail is like 100 kilometers in the other direction, and the rest of the ship is crash landed in another part. And uh, Katai wakes up, played by Jaden Smith, and uh, realizes that, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. He finds his dad, his dad's legs is broken. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any other survivors other than him, his him and his dad, um, coincidentally. And I love, one of my favorite scenes in this film, or one of my favorite moments in this film is the, they have this like shield barricade thing that's part of the ship that kind of seals off the ship and then like air locks the ship so you can, breathe inside the ship the fucking thing looks like a shower curtain um I, I don't this is a pretty big budget film and we're like directed by M. Night Shyamalan he's not like you know 
we're not talking in like the hundred million dollar budgets here, but my God, you have a few million in here and you're getting like shit that looks like shower curtains. The sets are just cheap looking. Everything about the sets is cheap. Um, I don't know why they cheaped out on the, the, the costume designs. Um, everything it's just so cheap looking and it didn't have to be cheap that cheap looking anyway like they could have put a little bit more effort into the way things looked and maybe it would come across a lot more believable especially if you're going for like a blockbuster atmosphere um this film is just so damn cheap um it does have its good qualities this film is not as horrible in my opinion as people say it is i would give it one and a half out of five but I bumped it up to two out of five because of its entertainment value. It's entertainment value when it has its moments that are actually pretty decent and in its entertainment value when it's just downright hilarious. Both are awesome and both give it that boost up. So I gave it a two out of five. I don't think this is an awful film, but it definitely uh, cuts corners a lot and for very, very, very unnecessary reasons, in my opinion. Um, so Katai at this point is instructed by his father to go find a beacon which is on the tail of the ship and he has to travel um, the distance between the two parts of the ship to get this beacon so he can shoot it up and signal that they're on this planet so that they can seek rescue. Um, Cypher Rage's legs are broken so he can't do it himself so he has to send his son and his son is on his first epic quest to uh, prove himself to be a ranger, which at the beginning of the movie he was all upset about because the commander-in-chief um, on Nova Prime did not uh, assign him to be a ranger, and that's what he, like, um, basically is aspires to be. So you have the whole, like, adventure uh, going through. Now, there's a scene with some monkeys, which Kitai is a complete idiot because... Uh, Will Smith's character, Cypher Rage, is guiding him through the whole thing through a uh, speaker and stuff like that. And he tells him, just don't move, stand still, and Buddy picks up a rock and whips it at the monkey's face, because that's smart. He's like, get out of here, and then like 10 more show up, so he has to book it out of there like an idiot. Swim across this water. Uh, by the way, this planet, spoilers, um, is Earth. So they, they, they ended up, when they went through the loophole around Earth, coincidentally, and now they crash landed on Earth, which is now a quarantine one planet, and filled with things that'll, you know, kill you. Uh, goes through this water, he gets, uh, like, some kind of leech on him, um, it totally messes with his nerves and his breathing, he, he's instructed by his dad to, like, inject himself and all that. There's also flashbacks, too, with, um, with, uh, Cypher Rage, Will Smith's character, and Sen Senshi. Uh, back when she was alive and there's lots of flashbacks with her and her dad There's actually one moment where she shows dad when she first got the Moby Dick book from uh, From a friend of hers a guy friend and uh, he, She's like yeah, I'm so excited. I love this book. I really want to read it with you. I uh, um, my friend let me keep it and um, Or my friend let me borrow it or something and then she's like uh, yeah, he even uh, let me hold on to it and Cypher Rage is like hold on to what in his whole like Will Smith way and she's like the book dad I'm like gotcha gotcha movie <laughs> that's a that's a this is a PG movie that's a pretty like blunt sex joke to make in a PG movie I mean it's not gonna fly over too many people's heads especially when she's holding a book that says Moby Dick um I don't, I don't think too many kids are not going to get that, especially in 2022. But uh, yeah, there's other flashbacks where um, she's blowing out some candles and uh, um, I just can't, I just can't take, like after that joke, I can't take any other thing seriously because they're talking about blowing out candles and, uh, and, the, and the dad keeps telling his daughter to blow and she's like, no, you blow dad. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, the Moby Dick joke, after that, the mind was in the gutter the rest of the movie anytime they came on screen, so. I blame Moby Dick. Um, there's a quote from Will Smith, or Cypher Rage. He tells, uh, he tells Jaden when Jaden starts slacking off, he's like, uh, 
If you want to die today, Katai, that is fine, but you are not going to kill me. And um, that quote doesn't make any sense, because if Katai dies, then he dies. So if Katai wants to die today, that's not okay, because that means that's your death too. So <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. If you want to die, that's okay, but you're not going to kill me. But if you die, you kill him. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense, Shyamalan. Oh, geez, Shyamalan. And this is a film, too, that has, like, one of the best monologues when Will Smith or Cypher Rage is uh, giving a monologue to his son about fear and um, how fear doesn't exist. That's very powerful stuff and very true, uh, you know, words that fear is not real. It's just um, fear can only uh, exist in the imagination, in the imagination of the future. Um and it's just uh, thoughts about things that do not currently and might not ever exist. And he goes on and in, in, a, in, a, in a really good performance at that point. Uh, Will Smith does well. Like, I, he does well for what he was asked to do. He's not, a, he's not bad. Jaden, uh, we'll not talk about that. But <laughs> I, don't, uh, I, don't, I don't diss movies on my channel. I just uh, talk about... I don't diss movies on my channel. I just want to say that I, I if, if there's flaws in a movie, I'll mention them. But I don't I don't say this is shit. This is so stupid. This is so dumb. No. Um, but I give I give credit where credit is due, and uh, I mention you know things that could have been different, could have been better, whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, Jaden's performance. Uh, He's, uh, he could use some acting training. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, um, the, the middle scene where he confronts his father and his father tells him to abort mission because the little shit's a liar. And um, this, this also teaches a lot of lessons about not lying. Don't lie, especially to your father and your commander in chief in the moment who's guiding you through a fucking dangerous planet. Lies about the the little um, inhaling tubes, inhaling liquids that coat his lungs for like 24 hours so he can breathe better on this planet, Earth, New Earth. Um, and he, he, like, a couple get damaged so he doesn't have enough to make it through the entire mission. And then his father finds this out midway and tells him to come back to the ship because it's abort mission, it's over, you fucked up. And, uh, well, not you fucked up, but you don't have enough shit to go, so there's, you know, you're gonna die, and he's like, no, I am not a coward, I am not a coward, <laughs> you are a coward, and then he jumps off the cliff, and flies, and disobeys his, his, uh, father's order, which is good, because, you know, he, he stood up for his beliefs, and abort mission and come back to the ship is suicide, so, I mean, you might as well try and die, instead of just go back and die, it's the same shit, at least you took a chance, so, I, prop him on, on that one and not being a coward. <laughs> oh, I'm bad. Um, and uh, there's a raft scene with Senshi's like, ghost spirit when he's dreaming and uh, she's hot, my god. Zoe, uh, Zoe Kravitz. What a beautiful girl. Um, yeah, she's like giving him advice in his... Uh, in his dream, and then there's a sequence where, like, her face is all fucked up, and she's like, wake up! And he does, and he uh, conveniently does make it to the tail of the ship, even though he's, like, basically suffocating, and uh, this bird, there's this uh, one time where this bird, like, helps him from the cold. There's another plot hole, too, with the with the cold, with the weather on this planet, because it's mentioned that the, the weather on this planet fluctuates like crazy from day and night, but there's a scene where it gets really snowy and really, like, frosty, where it's day. And then there's a scene at night where it's like rainy, but he's under a cliff and he doesn't like seem like, you know, it's not winter. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's raining. It's, there's no ice anywhere. Like if the weather's supposed to get super freezing at night and like warm during the day, they, they don't show that in the movie, um, the way they said it was supposed to happen. So whatever, that's a nitpick. It is what it is. He gets to the tail and, uh, this bird, like, helps him, like, keep him from the cold and somehow, again, conveniently delivers him, like, 
half a kilometer away from the fucking tail. So he gets the beacon. It's unable to work because of some electric currents in the sky. So he has to now climb a mountain. And this is where he uh, encounters what an Ursa, one of the monsters, and he has to like drown his fear and learn what his father has taught him about like fears in the mind. It's it's not real. You danger is very real. And again, that's a very very powerful monologue and very well written. And it's a very well written piece in this not so well written script, which is unfortunate. But uh, you know, it is what it is. It you know. The, Fleshing it out a lot more would have made would have done a lot of uh, favors for this film definitely And um, Yeah, he gets on top of the mountain. He has this moment where he, you know um, Root yourself in this moment. He hears his father say in his head and he does and he defeats the Ursa He shoots the beacon they get saved and everybody lives happily ever after and uh, Cypher rage gets up even though he's hurt. He's like stand me up just like his, uh, the people he rescued did for him in the beginning of the movie. He does at the end of the movie to his son, and he says, Stand me up, and then the guy stands him up, and he does the whole command. And, and they hug, and it's, it's a nice happy ending, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a nice uh, family-oriented film that's uh, appropriate for all audiences, um, except for the dick-holding joke. <laughs> and, uh, um... Yeah, so that's it. It's it's entertaining. Like I said, it's it's entertaining for the shit that makes you laugh, and it's entertaining for the shit that's actually pretty decent, such as the the fear uh, um, monologue and and the visual effects too. Like they're fun. They're not amazing, but like the way the planet looks, especially um, especially the way the planet looks is awesome. The way everything else looks is just so cheap. The costume design. I don't know what the fuck. Who designed those costumes? Honestly, I. <laughs> fuck um yeah so that's after earth um about the ursa too this earth is supposed to be filled with ursas that's what we heard at the beginning of the film um and then they contain this ursa on the ship while they're traveling to the planet that they were supposed to go to because they want to use this ursa as practice and training to eliminate your fear so this ursa is kind of like trapped like in cave like in like uh, cap captivity, there you go. And uh, this is how people are going to train to lose their fear of this Ursa, this, by this one Ursa. But they crash land on Earth, with, which apparently is supposed to be filled with Ursas. But this Ursa is the only danger. And it, now that the ship crash crashed, it's out like the Predator. And uh, this is where Jaden has to fight it, you know, when he climbs the mountain. And he, this one Ursa is the danger. But I thought Earth was filled with Ursas. That doesn't make sense. The, the movie at the beginning said that everybody had to flee Earth because it was like a quiet place. The movie A Quiet Place. It was filled with fucking monsters. But there's no monsters anymore. It's just this one Ursa that's the danger now at the end of the film. I don't know. M. Night Shyamalan. Good attempt. Good attempt at a sci-fi film. What more can you say? I mean, could I make a sci-fi film? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd make a shittier sci-fi film than this, so that's why I don't diss uh, anything. I just review films, okay? I'm not a critic. I'm not a critic. I'm a film reviewer. Critics are too much... I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. And I'm just not like that, so I just like to talk about films, so there you go. Subscribe to Morgan Film Fan if you like to listen to my voice or if you like my film reviews, and I'll be back with more soon, so stay tuned for those. Until then, take care and cheers.